Thank you for tuning in to the Law Nation Film Session. As we take a deeper look at Kelvin Joseph, the cornerback that was selected in the second round by the Dallas Cowboys, first and foremost, this kid is explosive. He is elusive. He got great speed, and he runs a 4-3, as you can see. 35-inch vertical, and he is strong, good hips. I love his footwork. He is one of those guys that will grow into this system. There will be some growing pains, but I believe his ceiling is so high that we can look over some of the warts. Now, he is aggressive, and he plays with a chip on his shoulder. Raw in a sense because he only played 15 games, six games with LSU, and nine games with the Kentucky. Nevertheless, when you turn on the film, you see this kid is explosive. He fires off to the ball. He's pretty good at run support, by the way. And I believe that this is just the beginning of his career because when he enter into the NFL, he will develop so much more than what we are able to see off the college tape. And I believe that he is one of the better picks for the Dallas Cowboys coming out of the 2021 draft. No doubt. What a fantastic pick, man. People were jumping up and jumping everywhere when they saw this guy selected by the Dallas Cowboys. He brings in that dog mentality, not afraid of anything. And when we start talking about his individual talent, look at him at the top of the screen. We're going to play this play all the way out. Just take a look at what he's able to do on the field. He's physical, great in run support, and he would get there. He strikes first, and that's what you're going to see out of his particular tape now when we look into everything let's look into this play again i want young dbs to have this type of mindset is even if it's mono mono even if it's a zone situation if you can identify the fact that they're about to run the ball do not allow the opposition to get their hands on you you get your hands on them first watch the jab watch the punch he's gonna strike stop him at his tracks right there Fight through that, rip them apart, get them, get away, and get to the runner. That is what you want, the mentality to strike first, setting the tone, being the aggressor. That's what I like to see out of Boss Man Fat. That's his rap name. That's his nickname. That's what people are going to call him on this next level. Here he is at the bottom of the screen. Yes, recovery speed is an important situation, even though it was a zone concept. Looks a little confused, but he stood right firm and stayed with him on that particular route. This is a similar route concept as well. He flips around, go into a zone, trail, turn his hips, follow, phase in, get a little vibe, get a little feel on him. You always want to be able to get some type of groove going, not allow the opposition to have a free pathway to the ball. We all have right for that ball while it's in the air. Remember, when the ball is in the air, the ball belongs to who? You. That's how you got to pay attention to it when the ball is in the air. Now, Kevin Joseph do have to work on some of his skill sets as it relates to being so aggressive. He want to jump routes and things like that. But that's natural. Even on this play, I believe it's supposed to be a switch off. The, the guy supposed to have the flat, and he didn't switch off at the top, which route recognition, route concept, is something that he will have to learn on the next level. Complex route designs when it's one of these situations where is this edge guy, he's telling Kelvin, hey, bag up a little bit. Hey, I'm going to cover the flat. He didn't get that message there. And watch. He, he squeezes down inside. The play develop. Play develop. He gives a little rub. and He's supposed to cover the underneath guy. And Kelvin's supposed to have the guy over the top and blown coverage is there. Now, that's what Kevin is doing right now. Watch. Look at this stare of death right here. Like, boy, what, what you doing? <laughs> you supposed to cover your man. Now, there's just confusions within the route concept right there. Now, on the next level, there will be many of complex nuances like this. And I believe Kevin Joseph will get this all worked out. Look at him just staring. Look, look at how he just stares him down like, man, come on, man. How you going to make me look bad like this? They go back to this position right here. Over the top help. This is the issue. 
one-on-one to the outside here. Kelvin Joseph is lined up on the outside, as you can see. And when we look into this play, we're going to let it play out naturally, and I'll break it down. Over the top safety is trash, right? <laughs> and it's touchdown. Now, Kevin Joseph with this particular play and this play design, he's playing with what? Thinking that he have inside leverage, thinking that he have a safety over the top to help him out. And he plays the one-on-one, kind of lacks a daisy a little bit, knowing that he have coverage and knowing that he have help. And the guy breaks into the inside and blow right by him. Now, Kevin was expecting, or Boss Man Fat was expecting, if this wide receiver goes anywhere to the inside, that Kevin will be able to make a play on the ball and he have help on into the inside opposed to the outside. So this is what Kevin was wondering. Hey, I, I got control of the outside. I got help into the inside, and none of that happened. <laughs> the safety ball like you know what to get down there to the bottom and which exposed the entire defense there. This is chess, not checkers. And, of course, that touchdown went against Kelvin Joseph on that particular play. Now, when we talk about run support and these sorts of things, I believe boss man fact Kelvin Joseph is pretty good at recognizing things when everything breaks down. He got a great vision of the field. He sees plays as they develop. We can see there's trips to the left. The quarterback going to try to fake it, run it, take it ball for himself, and he come down the field. Don't you guys know, I love DBs that come down and field. Those are good traits to have the ability to stop the runner from progressing or the quarterback or whoever trying to progress on the ball. Come down to make the tackle and he's very underrated at that because I believe when you look at majority of his film you look at him right here spaced spaced right here got his eyes on the quarterback keeping his eyes downfield got him captured and close off the edge no edge on him you can't get off of that edge from him and I like what I'm able to see off of this play now he came down late to jam so he didn't get a chance to put pressure on the guy. And the guy was able to draw the flag on this play. Let's look at the technique. First, of, first and foremost, we're going to pay attention to the late arrival of the jam. This was a good snap by the quarterback to get him right, get, to get him right before he was able to set. And he didn't get a chance to set, so now he had to go into a recovery mode. He's in recovery for the entire phase. He turns his head around. This is perfect right now. Perfect play on the ball right now. And if you go back, if you watch the way he took the interception from the Bama team, it was similar to this. Now, my thing is, when you look into this play, you got to understand you can't turn your head back inside. He's supposed to flip his shoulder all the way around and backpedal into this. Kind of like a low post man move in basketball the moment he was good until this moment right here he was good until he turned his head back inside and they're going to call this 99 percent of the time on the nfl level they're going to call this 99 percent of the time as well you got to keep your head around now in a situation whereas you see that this type of play occur on the national football league if he never turned for the ball, if he never turned around now and he stayed facing the court, facing the, the runner here or the receiver here, and if he played the hands completely, they might have gave him a pass. But by Kevin Joseph turning around for the ball and then turning his head back into the receiver, they're going to call that 99% of the time. And there's a golden flag right there. There's, there's the hater right there. They're going to call that. They're going to call that on that level. And when we look into this play, also, the receiver, let me just break down the receiver, what he did a wonderful job at. His inside arm, he kept his inside arm high on the shoulder pad here, not allowing Kelvin Joseph to get any type of release. And on top of that, he pulled back, pulled Kelvin Joseph toward his body, and he was able to draw the flag as well. So those are small techniques that you can use out there on the field 
and watch how he declare for the foul. Yeah, give me my flag. Give me my flag. That's how, that's how you got to do it. It's a craftiness game. It's a crafty game. It's all about hands and everything like that. And as a wide receiver, you got to be crafty. And as a DB, you got to be even more craftier because the rules are in favor of the wide receiver. So the moment Kevin Joseph had his head turned, he turned that inside shoulder in. He should have kept his shoulder and his head turned this way. Look at Kevin Joseph at the bottom of the screen. That's what I'm talking about. Man to man. I kind of, in my opinion of Kevin Joseph play, I like him better at press, believe it or not. Although he can play off the ball. I like him down in this moment right here. This is where you win the game at, right? <laughs> Look, feet are anchored, low back. He's staring at the chest of the receiver or the vocal cords right here. He's not fooled by it. And watch, the quarterback hikes the ball. He's not going anywhere. He's not going anywhere. And he got the perfect leverage. This wide receiver can't cut back inside the field. He only have this short area to operate with. And trust me, Kelvin Joseph's feet are good enough to stay with him so that I love this aspect of it and he shadows him and, and sealed that guy off the play out the play entirely this is Kevin Joseph on run support he knocks down 84 he put that pressure in on him good and I'm gonna tell you guys pay attention to number 22 on this play he goes all the way down to stop the run but this play is a setup for the next play. They play trips to the right. And, of course, pay attention to the tight end. He is the inline blocker. That's number 84 for the Florida team. Watch. He comes down to fill that hole there. Pay attention to this play because they're going to run the exact same play again or similar formation again. And 22 is going to bite the bait and leave boss man fat all alone. And he get burnt. We don't want to see that. We don't want to see that double move. He is kind of he he's kind of he's kind of happy with the trigger right here. Off the release, look, 84 is at the top of his route. He give him a uh, he give him a two piece. And that's the actual sound there. And he leave boss man fat in his tracks. Pay attention to number 22. We got to we're going to look at it from the other view. And pay attention to number 22. He's so focused on stopping the run, and he's so focused also on reading the keys of the three that's on the right side of the field, which is the trips. They, they gave him trip looks to the right, so he forgot all about the tight end on this particular play. And as he trips, he goes to that side and that support, and he shows his best impressions of Xavier Woods by turning his back completely to the offense. Now he need, you know, so if if I'm a if I'm the uh, actual defensive uh, coordinator for the Kentucky, I would tell number twenty two, hey, lean forward just a little bit, right there, now go to your room because here's the situation. Yes, he got trips to the right, and he bails to that spot. But the problem is he got his back turned, and the situation with you're supposed to help your receiver, you're supposed to help your DB out with over the top, and he leave him with the mercy seat. Now, I'm not going to give, I'm not going to leave boss man fat off the hook because this guy opened his hips, he's, he's at the top of his route, and he gave him a two-piece, shake him, and he's gone. He's gone and his touchdown. But let's look all the way back at the other angle, and I can tell you, tell you guys that this is not how you play defensive back in general. I'm talking about the safety, number 22. All right, so you see the trips to the right here. You see the uh, tight end in line, and he disguising this because you're not. he's not paying attention to the formation here. All he's worried about are these three guys here, the ball is height. He bails. He bails. The ball, <laughs> he's, not, he's not even looking at the quarterback. He's trying to get to a position or a spot. If he want to do that, he should backpedal into this stance right here. Never turn your back to the offense. He got his back turned to the offense. He's trying to direct traffic, for crying out loud. And his back is still turned. 
His back is still turned, and he sees the whole entire play happening. This guy right here sees everything that's that's about to happen. He witnessed the crime that's, that's, that is about to happen, and he's trying to tell him, like, hey, what you doing? And he's not paying attention to the ball. How is he? Look, even if this ball was going to go here, even if the quarterback was going to throw the ball to this guy, how will he make a play on this? <laughs> so never, never DBs, safeties, turn your back to the offense, backpedal into this thing. If anything, this could have been a pick, but you got your back turned and you're leaving your man out here on the streets. Man, Ricky, Ricky. <laughs> and he still don't know who got the ball. Look, this is a crime scene. Kyle Pitts got the ball. And he's going to run it in for the touchdown off of number 22's stupidity. Now, that's a learning curve. Of course, these guys are still young, but you just don't turn your back to the offense, especially if you're the defense and you, you are the safety, the last line of defense. You want to give your team a chance and an opportunity. And look at the fan right here. He's like, praise God. <laughs> but. I come here to tell you that that happens. This is the National Football League. Look at Boss Man. He's at the top here. He got to fight through this, and that's what I like to see. Being able to fight through the trash causes the turnover here. This is so important because he does not allow this play to develop, fights through it, still fight down, and make the tackle. This is why it's so important to play through the echoes of the whistle to be aggressive. And that's why I like this young kid. He's always around the ball. And even though it's a situation in a scenario where you might think and say, well, it's not enough law. But no, I do like this. Watch the switch. Watch, watch the switch off right here. This is so important too. being able to switch off from your guy to slow down the receiver. I like seeing this from Kelvin Joseph as well. Ball recognition, ball recognition. Now, on the next level, he may have to slow down his switch off because that could be a pump fake, and now that's a touchdown again on him or what have you. But I do like the fact that he is cognitive enough, cerebral enough to know where he's at on the field and switch that thing off. But, like I said, his footwork and the way he moves out in space i like him better at press because he makes a lot of gamble moves that i really really want him to just horn those things in just a little bit get off of his guy and, and just push this guy out of bounds i like that aspect of kevin joseph game or boss man fat game the ability to recognize the play and to make a movement on it he is fast and this is another play where is he lying off ball He's going to fight through it, make the tackle, make the tackle, get him out of bounds, push him out of bounds. I like that. Uh, being able to recognize, although he's off ball, he still fight through there. This was a holding play, but it's so important to always pursue. They're going to push this one back. But I wanted to show you guys the aggressive, the demeanor, the ability to get upfield. Some people allow the opposition to get to them. But, no, he's always facing and pushing and getting upfield, watch, this is why it's so important. Look, he got upfield, and now he get into the face of the receiver, saying, okay, I got you next time. So that is what Kelvin Joseph bring to the table. Tenacity, temperaments, that dog mentality, the recovery right here causes the receiver to get off his route and then get into his face. We need that type of mentality, even though in a situation we might not like what we see out for this play. Because he pushed the quarterback down. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. And you can't do that on the next level. But that temperament, that mentality, he's always looking to make a play. And he's aggressive. Watch. Get the quarterback. Go get him. <laughs> that's that dog. Mama, there go that dog. There go that dog. And that's what he's going to bring to the table. He may, be un he may not be the most disciplined guy. <clears throat> he may not be the most disciplined guy. But that temperament, that mentality, he's going to bring out and he's going to put that on the table and say, okay, you live with it because I'm out here, I'm trying to make a play, and I'm going to set the tone. Yeah. Get out of my Yeah, so that's boss man fat Kelvin Joseph. 
we can pull up a list of all of the guys that he kind of shut down and these sorts of things. But in the hearts of hearts, I believe we got us a guy that's not afraid. And we need that type of mentality out there on his defense, a defense with a bite, a defense with a type of mindset to say, hey, you're going to try to run on us? Well, we're going to punch you in the mouth. You're going to try to score cheaply on us? We're going to take the ball away from you. I like what I'm able to see from this guy. Remember, the ceiling is so high. It is. It is. He got length. He's got the 4-3 speed. I believe within the confines of this particular system and the way we operate and handle things, he will be all right. I want to know your thoughts. I want to know how you all feel of boss man fat. Kelvin Joseph, was he a good pick for us? Oh, I'm sorry. Was he a great pick for us? I believe that this guy got some untapped untapped potentials, and the staff and everybody in Dallas will harness that, and we will see his talent throughout the year. That's been my time. I really thank you all for yours. And remember, you're listening to nothing but the best. Go Cowboys.